Hello everybody, my name is Gary J, and welcome to my speedrun submission video for The Way Remastered Any Percent. Uh, the Way Remastered is a 2D platformer, uh, kind of adventure game based on a really tragic, like, driven by a really tragic story. Um, the reason I picked this game up was because it was relatively glitchless before I came. Um, nothing really big, there are a couple minor skits, but nothing really big, and then I accidentally went through a wall. And, well, the beginning of the game is going to be very calm and relatively glitchless, quote-unquote. But it's going to pick up very quickly. So, before I start, I'm going to be changing the language of the text to Japanese. All the cutscenes are spoken, so you'd think it would be the dialogue spoken that would progress the text. But it is actually just the dialogue boxes for some reason. So we're going to change it to Japanese, because as far as we know, that is the fastest dialogue text boxes. And we're going to go in 3, 2, 1. So I'm going to give a bit of a synopsis on the story. Uh, I, will, I strongly encourage people to play this game. It's on Switch. It's on PC. It goes on sale a lot, so it's not relatively that hard to find. Um, but I do want to kind of give a bit of a story. Tom, we play as Major Tom. He was part of a bit of a NASA like exploration. He and his wife are part of a uh, a space team that went to a, an abandoned or a planet. In search of the Temple of Life for immortal life, um, they eventually came out empty-handed. But soon after that, they came back. Tom's wife died, and Tom decided, you know what? There's one thing we never tested. So, in this entire story, um, Tom's gonna go through pretty much every trial and tribulation in order to try to save his wife, which is a very deep story, I will say. Um, we go through a lot of troubles through this game. And we skip a lot of the troubles in this game, so, you know, there's going to be some uh, things we don't touch on, so. Here's a minor skip. I'm going to do a minor skip right here. I can technically move during this cutscene, so I'm holding right in order to start over here. I need to collect these three pages, and uh, that just lets me save, like, not even ten seconds of walking. Before we get too far into it, I want to mention this is being ran on the Nintendo Switch. Um, the There is a PC version and then there's a console version. The console versions are a lot more broken than the PC version, and the Switch is going to be the fastest um, for a reason we're going to see at the very end of the game. So right now we're supposed to go into this, this tower, knock out a guy, and um, deactivate this emergency gate that's coming up right here. That's red. Um, but that takes time. So instead, I'm going to go this way. And I'm going to be showing up the first major glitch of the run. Um, if we pause... Ah, if we pause the same frame, we die. For most things. We don't die. Oh, why? This is a frame perfect. But we do have a pause buffer, but the pause buffer is... Not the most immediate thing. So if we pause if we pause the game the same frame we die, we do not die. Because logic. I, I do the same thing I do the same thing every day. Um we the way we pause buffer is we plus press the plus button on the I almost said nunchuck on the Joy-Con and then quickly roll to the X button, which gives us our task menu. The uh, task menu Um The pause button overrides the task menu, so we can slowly, we, if we spam them together, we can kind of progress frame, at, frame by frame. We're going to be using that here. We're going to use it in another place in order to try to skip a cutscene. Um, but for this particular type of glitch, the one where we try to avoid death, um, we might see it one later, one time later on the run if something goes wrong, but besides that, um, this is really the only place we'll see it. Because after this, we'll get a gun, and uh, we can just shoot most things. Seems correct now. So this is how we're going to skip the tower. I'm on the wrong side. I'm going to push... So this right here was kind of a puzzle in order to be able to charge the ship. We have a bunch of tasks we have to do. I can mention that in a second. But right now, I'm going to take the battery we just used, and I'm going to clip it through that wall. And I'm going to try to grab... Nope, that's not right. Try to grab the ladder in one frame. Nope. There we go. So that me, lets me climb below the ladder, and if I get to a certain height, I can grab the battery 
while I'm grabbing the ladder, and the game is very confused about what my collision should be, so I'm able to just kind of walk. So I'm pushing the battery, but I also don't have any collision with the wall. This game, the main problem with this, the main glitches with this game have to revolve around the game getting confused with overlapping states. We're going to see that a lot later in the run as well. Um, most of the main glitches are related to overlapping states, but I can explain a lot more of that later. So, this, so there's a, a glitchless strat for this level, and there's a glitch strat for this level. This is the glitch strat. It saves a whopping two seconds. But it's also... Okay, it's also more consistent because we have to do less pause buffering. The pause buffering, like I said, is a one frame trick. That's not, that's not the right time to do it, but that doesn't matter. Um, uh, it is a one frame trick, so we want to do it as least as possible. So right here, I'm getting a code for the tower that we actually passed by. Okay, the things we have to do, we have to give, we have to unlock the gate, the... Okay. First off, we have to go find the ship, which we just found. I'll we, take it with me. Uh, flew right below it. We have to find a ship, we have to get our truck to the ship. We have to get access to leave with the ship. We have to um, get a gun. Good cycle. To get a gun, we have to um, open the hatch above the ship and things like that. Um, right now, I just got a fuse to fix a hatch, and I got the code to open this to get a gun, and when I went up, I got uh, the code for the tower, the watchtower. So right here, I'm going in to give the code for the gun, and once I get the gun, I'm going to be doing something weird. So this game, I mentioned, has gets confused when certain states lap. And it doesn't clear checkpoints very well, as in, like, what state you're currently in. So right here, I'm going to grab the gun, Security won't be and I'm going to climb down this ladder, climb up, and reset. The game gets very confused, and I'm just going to float through walls now. So when you're climbing a ledge and a ladder, the game it gets very confused because you're both technically on the ground, but also in the air, if that makes any sense at all. I also did, I did that because if I were to finish the climbing animation, I'd lose the state. So the game lets, so you're both in the ground, on the ground and in the air at the same time, so the game lets you use the gun in midair. Which is letting me be able to float. Because when you use the gun, you're supposed to be on the ground. Yo, Japanese, how's it, how's it going, man? So that lets me kind of use the gun, and it lets me float. Because why not? That's not right. Dang it. Okay, that sucks. I lose the state if I were to ever finish. That's death. Okay. There's also fall damage in this game, which makes this a little limiting. But, um... So that's the fuse I, I got. The fuse. I'm raising that because I have to. Ah, why? Again, that's something I had to do. I'm glad to hear Japanese. I'm glad you're doing good. And now I'm floating all the way back over here to get my ship. The ship is the last thing I have to do. Um, I can explain the gun hover state a little more later on because there's a few other kind of small things I have to that are weird about it. But um, yeah. So that's hangar. Oops. And to, um, to kind of illustrate the fun parts about the rest of this run, uh, I'm going to do something fun. This isn't optimal, but, um, okay. 
Okay. Oh, well. I'll show that off later. So that map is actually here, right here. So doing this cutscene, I'll kind of elaborate on what I was doing. So there are certain maps in the game. So, like, Earthbound. Everything is on one gigantic map. Um, in this game, there are certain rooms that are um, similar to that. So right, this, the hangar, and the tower we skipped in that room, they're all on the same overall map. So if I were to go out of bounds, I could float to the next one. Um, this next place we're going to has a similar thing. So I'm going to try to do a frame perfect cutscene skip. And if I'm able to do it, that's great. If not, there's a backup. Uh, but I'm going to be quiet because this is very, very finicky. I have to pause the game within four frames. Like, four frames from when I get control. So. Thank you for the flight. Have a nice day. Here we go. Good. Good. Okay. I can't believe So that this is a cutscene that uh, plays when I discover the planet again. Also, I forgot to split. Oh well. <laughs> the planet is mostly a big um, desert. But we're doing it in the ship, so if you reset the game, or reset the state during right the same frame you activate a cutscene, the cutscene plays still. But it's dangerous. Um, usually well. it's good, usually it's bad. Sometimes it'll then duplicate the cutscene, which is annoying because it takes up time. Um, but in this state, it's only going to play it once. The reason I needed to do this, I forgot. I can control. The text box are faster. I forgot about that. The reason I wanted to do that is I'm going to come down these steps and see this ladder, climb it, and reset the game, and then reset again, because I died. Because that just happens. And I'm gonna float through the front of this ship. And this is the end of the map. So that skips a bunch of uh, just Let's maneuvering around the, the uh, like, it skips like three rooms. What's this? Ah, almost. Okay. Yes, the temple of life so is real. Well, yeah. So that skipped uh, like three rooms that are not necessarily long, but it's really good to be able to skip it. I'm gonna try that again. So here I'm getting the state again. So this is a bit of a dungeon. There's a boss. I'm too high. Ah, that should be good. Um, there's a boss that we have to escape from later on in this, but very conveniently, the beginning of this this level is at the very end of this level. So we're gonna go all the way, start from the beginning, and come all the way over here. This is not a preferred angle. This is not a good place. Oh no! There we go. I did it. And we've skipped pretty much two puzzles and an escape I bet sequence. It fits into the pedestal outside. So yeah. You can kind of see what I mean by it. this game just kind of starts unraveling very quickly after we leave the first section. Here I'm going to very specifically stop and jump and then grab the vine. That lets us, if we don't do that, we skip the climbing animation here. I'm going to reset at the very end of the climbing animation. That gives me the ability to grab the hover. But if I don't, if I do it too early, I actually spawn back at the door. That's like one of a, f like one of two enemies I'm actually gonna kill in this game. <laughs> and here's the second one. You won't stuck fit. So, the area we went to, that was the one place that Tom had a hunch so that could be solved, I knew it. but they never did when they visited. So that was the reason we came back, and we now learned that yes. There is more of a place to this than we than they originally thought. So now he's coming in here, and um, this place didn't show up. Finding these luscious green lands that they never expected, never saw on their radar. 
nothing like that. Also, the music is too loud compared to the dialogue for some reason. That just kind of happens here. And yeah, we're gonna start our way on these new lands. Come on. Thank you. So these guys right here, you can you're supposed to shoot them, but you're able to jump over them if you time it right. However, there's eight or there's seven of these in a row right here. I could do the pause buffer strat I'd mentioned earlier. Well. I could do the pause buffer strat, and I should have done it there. That I mentioned earlier. But um It doesn't save as much time. And we found hey, native wait. people. And they're running away. So the best thing to do is to just kind of float. Um I, I do the same thing when I find people in real life. I just try to float away from them. It's normal. This is actually originally where we found this this state happening. There's a bridge right there that they throw rocks at. If you if they throw a rock at you and hit you while you're on the one of you holding the gun. Um, you're supposed to fall off, but that triggers the state of both being in ground and in air, and that I lets us float. You. Um, I need to find a way we have around. to find a way around. So I can explain a little bit more of that later, but right here, I'm going to be performing a very important trick. You don't know how... Diff that's annoying. That's very annoying. You don't know how annoying that is. And right here, so I'm not supposed this to be here yet, because the gate's supposed to close when I enter. Hopefully I'll find more and I'm going to do an emergency reset. I think that's wrong. I don't remember. Um, so we mentioned before how the game has a weird time of clearing checkpoints. So right now, I cleared... I am... Um, okay, good. It's right. So I enter that room, which you're not supposed to enter until you have this ability called access. I entered the room without access, and then I did a thing called emergency reset. Emergency reset is essentially it begins you to the back of beginning of the chapter you're in. However, it's a little buggy sometimes if you're not in the original room that the chapter is supposed to be in. Um, then it glitches out a bit. Um, it reset the flags. It reset everything I was supposed to do, like how it was supposed to be, except based in the room I was in. So. I was supposed to do a big boss fight, I was supposed to escape something, run away, um, but uh, it, I was able to confuse the game into giving me the items that I'm supposed to have, even though I don't have them. And that, we're going to use that a couple more times on the run. But yeah, I'm going, that kind of skips to the next chapter. Right here, I have the, an orb. We're going to unlock the new, the rest of the abilities for this orb right now. For right now, we have, an, we have a, you could say spell. We have an ability called access, which lets us activate computers, technology, pretty much any ancient thing that's around here. Also, hi, Tin Can. Good boy. Hi, Tin Can. Good boy. So now we have to go to three different chambers. These chambers have telekinesis, teleportation, and uh, magnesis. And we have to go to each one, solve the puzzles in there. It's very long, like, a lot of movement-based things we have to do. If only we had our gun, because then we could float through things. Except, you know, telekinesis is actually just as good. So I mentioned before how the, we're able to, if we're able to use the gun in the air, we can float, because we're supposed to only use it in the ground. We're, we also get a thing called telekinesis right here. Which has a very similar property to it. Nope, that's the wrong thing. Also, I said Magnesis. I don't know why I said Magnesis. It's Shield. Shield is the last one we get. Um, There are benefits to Telekinesis over the gun. As you can see, we can clip through pretty easily. I reset the, I reset the stage right there in order to overlap the cutscenes. Because it gives me into a better state right here. Which allows me to access this. And I'm going to do it one more time. Just to save a little bit of movement. And I'm going to walk over here. And activate that. I might be too high. Nope, I'm good. So there's a lot I didn't get to explain there. And I apologize. It's just, what the? Um... Go. 
Like I said, there's a lot I, that's just weird. The main important thing is every time you see that screen transition, um, my state resets, so I wasn't able to hover, which is why I grabbed that ledge right there in order to float. Now, the only reason I'm floating right now is just it's a little faster, mainly because I have to climb these stairs otherwise, and climbing stairs is annoying because you can't climb, you can't jump up them like ladders. It's very slow. It's nice that they made this bridge for me. And just movement-wise, usually hovering is preferred over uh, just walking. So now we actually go to the very first room, actually the very beginning of the uh, this the first map that we we started skipping from. I forgot to split again. Oops. Oh wow. I'm gonna hover over these guys. And this this climb right here is very annoying. Nope. Nope, that's not right. So the uh, ground right here, where I'm standing, at that level, there's a, a bit of ground that extends out of bounds, so I actually have to jump around it. That's really annoying. So, there's a there's one other place where I have to do a, a climb like that, I'm pretty sure. So, I'm going to start going down these steps, and I'm going to reset, and I missed the timing, because I'm smart. It's, it's, that didn't happen. That didn't happen at all. This is, this is, so we're, we're, we're back here for first time. I'm going to go down these steps a little bit and reset, and that spawns tin can down here. That's more so an emergency thing in case I die or I am stupid. Okay, so I'm going to wait right here. And run past and jump. Ah, okay. I jumped too early. I'm not going to try it again. So that's a very precise cycle skip. Tin can is too far. Tin can is too far away. I'm just gonna wait it out. Tin can is too far away. Tin can is too far away. Tin can is too far away. Tin can scares away the bees, which is very convenient. We can completely skip tin can here. That's that's not supposed to happen. That's what's supposed to happen. Tinkin also has kind of has a mind of his own. He likes to lag or lag around a little bit. So uh, he's supposed to be there when I and when I get into the range of that first B, that last B, but he wasn't there. So this is another state abuse. So we we teleport. We got the ability to teleport. Teleportation. Um, when we teleport, we both have collision and don't have collision. We have collision in order to stand on the ground during the animation, but we don't have collision because we're supposed to be moving. So we reset our state. When that happens, we are able to... And nothing happens. Um, we can trick the game into having, like, being able to use both. This is a state we call half collision, which makes sense. Um, this allows us to fall through ground, climb walls, and um, you think, oh, we can just go through walls anyway with the, with the gun hover and the Telekinesis hover, what's the point of this? This has beneficial states over the other one. For instance, we can fall through grounds here, but we can't otherwise. So that makes this a little easier. We're actually going to be stacking it later on in the run, which is going to be fun. Right here, I'm going to do that. And die. <laughs> it's not supposed to happen. Okay. So the reason I'm activating this gate is the game is very confused. I'm activating that in order to have the teleporter. Why did I die? Oh. The one negative thing about this is if you die with half collision, it resets your collision as opposed to the uh, ledge grab state where the only reason that would reset is if you change rooms. Change maps, I should say. Also, like I mentioned, collision, or we take fall damage. And it's very finicky with this. 
Because I have to... Nothing happens. Time movement's very careful. There you go. So, the game's very confused. We're not supposed to be able to access that button without the other button. So, we hit that button, and I'm gonna come down here. Oh, no. Hit that button and spawn up here to save a little bit of movement. And so now the game understands that I hit the button. So when I hit, when I hit, it understands I hit a button. So when I hit this, it should be coming back now. And that should have overlapped the cutscenes. Yes, okay, that's cool. I overlapped the cutscenes right there in order just to skip a little walking movement. I also have to regain collision. Because if I were to stand on that with no with half collision, I wouldn't move. Um, like with the staircase, or with the uh, ledge grabs, in order to reset your collision, you'd have to um, just re-grab the ledge. Or you'd have to finish the animation, rather. So right here, I'm actually going to climb up. And Tin Can had a mind of his own, which is great. I have to wait right there for a split second, because otherwise, that will happen. They can just fall through the ground sometimes. It's great. I hate this. Thank you. <laughs> he gets so excited and he runs. And for some reason his collision just falls. Why is this now happening? Okay, so like this game is relatively consistent. Like there's not much major time loss. Except sometimes Tin Can is the one thing that makes us lose time. So I had to jump up there in order to respawn, reset my spawn. And now I can float. And this just skip, skips a little bit of movement. This probably saves about, I want to say, 40 seconds of movement. So that lets me go in here. And we are going to now go down. Also, Tin Can's nowhere to be seen. I don't know why. I'm going to go down here and enter the last chamber. Which is shield. Shield acts just like telekinesis. Hi, Tin Can. <laughs> okay. So I'm able to use it in midair, but there's not really any ledges right now. So unfortunately, we have to resort to telekinesis. That's not right. <laughs> That's right. So we could use this elevator with shield, but it's slower, generally. So I'm actually going to be using telekinesis here. I'm going to reset my location. And I'm going to get in a very specific spot. Fall and mash and jump. That way I don't clip through the ground. There we go. Access. Yes. And here, I'm actually, instead of resetting my position, I'm actually going to do an emergency reset again. So, like I mentioned before, it's the emergency reset doesn't really know what it's supposed to do when you're not in the main room that you're supposed to reset in. So right here, this resets the game, but it has weird characteristics that we'll see later on. So right now, I stacked both telekinesis and ledge, uh, and uh, why well, I, I I stacked both gun hover and half collision. So I'm able to go through this section pretty quickly. I'm gonna do a similar thing where I'm going to reset my collision, my collision, my position, and that puts me right over where I need to go. This, okay. Now I could reset my collision. Why do I keep saying collision? I'm sorry. I could reset my collision again, but that would actually make it so I can't go through the door. So I have to unfortunately climb the share the uh, the shaft, the mine shaft. It's faster to climb it than to use the elevator. It's also faster to, to descend without the elevator as well, so. We don't actually use the elevator at all. I know, we do something unintended in this game. Like, how could you? And also I'm gonna hover here. I mentioned before that hovering is usually preferred over walking. Oh, that's not right. Hi, Tin Can. Good boy. Hi, Tin Can. 
Good boy. So it reset me. What the? On. Another major skip. There we go. I skipped walking. So the emergency reset reset my position to where it should be when I enter that room. But I didn't enter that room from where it was, where that was. But the game just like, okay, it's going to resume the position I was. It's going to put me in the position that it knows I should be in. So it puts me back to where the story would put me in when I enter that room. I explained that horribly, and I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure you understand what I meant. There we go. So right now, we are kind of getting... We're leaving this planet. For now. We're going to be, unfortunately, rejoining earlier than we expect. So right now, we're flying to the Temple of Life. However, we're going to be attacked by a bounty hunter, which has an amazing accent. I'm going to just let you listen to this real quick. A transmission. No one should even be here. Let's scan the air. Stolen ship and a nice bounty on your head. Okay. So we're getting shot down. <laughs> I I love I don't know why I just love that uh, transition. So yeah, we're gonna die. Um, we're, we're, he thinks we're gonna die, but we actually live, and um we end up in the desert. Now this bounty hunter has a robot set up very conveniently around where our ship is. I'm assuming we were unconscious for a long time, so instead of coming up. And killing us himself, he set up a puzzle. Cause it's a puzzle game. Why not? It's made by puzzle game. You have to have puzzles. Why? Um. Also, I grew a beard <laughs> during that time, so apparently we were gone for a while. Thank God you're. So we have to um. Go defeat the bounty hunter, cause he's gonna chase us down no matter what we do. So we're going to escape him using explosives. Are you okay? We're gonna be using kind of a similar similar strats. We're gonna be using um, the gun hover, gun hover glitch again. But we're gonna be skipping a lot more than we're supposed to. So there's the bounty hunter. He's setting up a bunch of robots. We're gonna be skipping all but this wave of robots and the final boss of the area, I guess you could say. I will say this game has really good bosses. That was dumb. There we go. So now that I got that hover, I'm able to float all the way over to the other side of the map. Now, before this, we found this. Before we found the, the gun hover state, the only major glitch besides the original one was the half collision. So we had a very obscure out of bounds that I found. You had to jump along pretty much three pixel wide ledges and ascend. And it like if you died, you'd lose a minute. And it was very annoying. And then we found Gun Hover, and I was both kind of happy that that strat died, and also sad because I spent so much time on it. <laughs> That's kind of the my life with round with glitch hunting, though. So it's right now. I solved the puzzle preemptively. We have to use water to get two things. We have to spawn a rock, and also move a platform. I set up the thing to spawn a rock, and I'm going to explain why later. Pretty much, I'm going to be skipping movement again. So unfortunately, we do have to climb this ledge right here, but I'm gonna get it back pretty quickly. Good, I get the pizzas in order. So this is demonstrating that we have to... There's gears here, and we have to go all the way back here in order to move the gears. And I, we got the collision. I'm gonna go back down here and not die. Oh, I'm too low. Now, I mentioned before how we have fall collision. We have a... Not, fall damage, that's the word. Well, we can cancel all fall damage by grabbing a ladder. Unlike that. But, I mean, that worked. Okay. Uh, 
that's okay. Okay. So once we set this, the camera is going to phase pan all the way over here. And I'm going to very quickly reload. And the camera was over here longer than it was over there. So the game thinks that I was over here. So it resets my position all the way over here. Which saves a lot of movement. Well, not a lot, but like, uh, it's very convenient. I'm gonna go ahead and move the boulder onto the platform. And grab this ledge again. Do that and reset. It is faster to not reset, but if you die, it's you lose time, so. And the platform is very annoying. And we're gonna drop the rock on this robot. Oh no, I died! Okay, no. Um, <laughs> we sat there for about a second. If we die immediately, we, we, we spawn up there. But like before, it puts a checkpoint down there. So we wait a second and then die, it's faster than just climbing down. And we're gonna take the core of the robot. We're gonna send it down here to the ruins. We gotta go down there, we're gonna set it up to explode. This is a very annoying spot. I crouch. Um, it's barely too far if you were to go without landing on that little ledge. So you have to land on the small ledge. If you crouch, you fall less distance and closer to the original ledge. So I just use that. And um, we're gonna escape the bounty hunter. By um, blowing everything up. There's a little cutscene glitch right there. You can let go of the uh, bomb during the cutscene. And that lets Tom go over there faster. It skips about a second and a half, because otherwise you just push the bomb to the cutscene trigger. So it essentially blows up nothing. Because, yeah. And, um, we escaped! Huzzah! We will not be followed anymore, because we outconned him. We have ran away, as you say. Unfortunately, our ship got too much damage, and we're not able to use it. But we're at, we are able enough to well, we are able to power our wife. But that's as much as we can do. So we have to travel on foot. Also, those robots are supposed to be dead, but I ignore them because I don't like killing robots in this game, it's except for the two I killed at first. But that's fine. Hello. Um, they came back to life. It's okay. It's okay. Still have this to so now we're exploring. Now we're going to be traveling to the city to where the hidden city now. is. After a little bit of dialogue. Also, my favorite thing about this game, if you were to look at my SRC page, you see pretty much all of the games I run, except for one. There are no bathroom breaks or anything like that. Except for this game. This is the only game I run that actually has, like, big uh, bathroom breaks. This is where we start to get a little more fun. And by fun, I mean we can just skip a lot more. So we're... About two thirds into the story now, sure, um, right but you think you realize, oh my, my run only saves about like, there's only about like nine minutes left. Am I just that bad of a gamer? Well, yes, but also no. Um, so right here we find out that the hidden city is hidden. I know, unbelievable. Um, and we have to go to three batteries in order to deactivate them in order to get rid of the cloaking device. But that takes time, and Tom really just wants to get to the city. So we're going to be doing a bit of a glitch. Now, I mentioned before how we can use emergency reset to confuse the game's state. We're going to be something similar, but with the main menu. Um, so I'm going to take some time and leave. So I'm departing to an area. Also, hi, Luke. For, welcome to the stream. I'm departing, but also going to the main menu. So the game knows that we have departed this map, but... Now that we're entering the map, the game's confused because we it, we left, but now we're coming back, so they're realizing, oh, they they're returning, so they probably defeated the battery chamber already, and um, yeah, there we go. No, nope. da, that sucks. I might have to reset that. <laughs> Please be entering. Good. Okay. I think I'm good. Okay, good. Ooh. Okay. Good. 
That's very rare. That's a frame perfect thing. Um, I have to do that very quickly. So yeah, so the game knows that we're coming back after leaving, so it's gonna clear the checkpoints and believe that we actually beat the chamber. All three chambers, and that skips about 20 minutes. Anything? So if I were to miss, those pauses are three to four frames, and this is a 60 FPS game. Um, if I miss it, there is a backup I can do, which I'm actually gonna illustrate later on for the final area. But um, those those are very tight position. These are very tight frames, and that's actually why I paused for on the menu at first because for some reason the if you give it more time, it's easier to do because the the game gives you like it doesn't lag, I guess, or something like that. I don't really know. Also, you guys like Battle Toads? I do want to mention a couple people real quick. So there's two other main runners in this game. A guy named Flock, who is the original person that started running this game. Before I came in, the run was about an hour 28, and it was relatively glitchless. Um, unfortunately, most of the skips that he found, we actually skip. Um, but Flock, he's relearning the game. He's just busy right now, so hope soon enough he will be running the game. The other runner is a Vlad, or Vlad, Vlad2D on Twitch. He currently has the record for 4307. And he's been helping tear this game apart. Once we found ledge collision, ledge grabbing, and uh, gun hover, this game just went down by over half. No. It was ridiculous. And um, this game is a lot of fun. And like I mentioned before, the game goes on sale pretty easily. So if you really want just a kind of an easy, consistent game to run, I wouldn't say this is the easiest, but it's very understandable. And uh, puzzles, the puzzles are always set. No, nothing really RNG except for tin can. Um, this game is very fun to run, I will admit. So, I encourage this game. And, um, I'm gonna go ahead and enter the hidden city. Yeah. So this is the second to last, you could say chapter, I guess. We define the chapters as whenever you emergency reset, but this actually would be the last chapter. Whenever you emergency reset, whatever it brings you to, that's what we kind of classify as a chapter. Um, also, when you enter a hidden city that's full of aliens, make sure you yell as, to as loud as you can in order to attract as many aggressive aliens as possible. Thankfully, for Tom's sake, that's not right. Thankfully, for Tom's sake, we're actually going to be skipping all of them, hopefully. This is a very precise drop. So, like earlier, this... This, all three maps are in the same room, quote unquote. So we're able, we're able to fall through all three of them. This actually skips a bunch of uh, walking along with p aliens shooting at you. So, and I'm gonna try to get in a very specific position in order to regain collision. And I got it, good. Um, so that actually, I reset right on the cutting trigger. When Tom spawns, he walks forward. Or when he gets collision again, he walks forward during the cutscene. You also can't activate cutscenes when you're at half collision. And Tin Can is the best of best boys, good boys. He sacrifices himself for us. Press F for Tin Can. It is sad. But, um, if we spawn right on the cutscene trigger, it skips the walking, which saves maybe, like, Two seconds. So we're gonna enter here. Unfortunately, we have to leave Tin Can behind, even though he did so much for us, as in uh, falling through the ground. And this is where we encounter Red Dorito, the uh, Nacho Cheese Dorito. So you probably noticed there's a a cool ranch Dorito. And this, this nacho cheese Dorito that we encountered early on the run, these are essentially like the guardians of the citizens in the hidden city. I skipped a lot of big story points, but pretty much, um, citizens of this planet found the, uh, in, um, the, the, uh, eternal life is actually kind of a computer simulation, and we're gonna actually enter that in a second. 
in order to try to defeat the final boss. And um, these are kind of the guardians. The blue one wants to help save everyone, but the red one wants to keep them secured. And ooh, nice boost. Oh, that's not right. That's not right either. Okay. And so we're we've been digging for the longest time. You can tell because he got older and moves faster. And since he's moving, or he moves slower. And since he moves slower, he moves at about the crawl speed regular Tom does. So jumping is slightly faster. You probably save about like, I wanna say 10 seconds when jumping. And um, very conveniently, we have uh, dug all the way through. And we found the uh, entrance to the hidden city. Or the, uh, the eternal chamber, I should say. And the uh, cool ranch Dorito is guiding us to the to free his people. So I kind of lied a bit. We're supposed to go enter this virtual reality situation, where we have to fight a bunch of enemies that are annoying and can shoot us from the other side of the map. Um, and we have to fight the final boss, which is kind of a I want to be the guy. Uh, what's it called? I don't remember. Shoot or hell, shoot or hell kind of situation. But this is kind of the only unfortunate skip that we found in this game. This is only the only thing I kind of wish we didn't find. So I'm going to enter reality, and I'm actually going to close the game. And I'm going to re-enter the game. So a similar thing happened, this is a similar thing that happened during the battery skips. We entered the reality, and since we didn't quite leave the room, the checkpoint says that we left the room. But we haven't left it yet. So our body is still in the room. So the game is going to spawn us back in the room. And since we're entering the room again. It assumes that we beat the final boss. And that we're at the end of the game. So this is kind of the only. This kind of the only thing I don't like about this run. We skipped the final boss. Now the final boss isn't anything special. But like. It's a really grand thing and like we skip an entire dungeon too we end up skipping it anyway because we get we actually re get our gun back and we can gun hover again and we just climb a wall but i don't know but right here this is kind of a donation incentive if we want um we get to choose between eternal life or staying in real life but helping save this world so we're gonna for us for this situation we're gonna save the world we're going to rebuild society here on this planet we because it's faster. But the other option, which is you enter the reality again and you save your wife and you live forever, that's actually the bad option. And that's the only story thing I really don't like about this game. Like, I'll, I strongly encourage running this game. I strongly encourage buying this game. This game is a lot of fun, specifically when you first play it. It's just... I mean, these small gripes are nothing, really. To be honest, I'm just being a little nitpicky. But, um... Yeah, I want to thank Flock, and I want to thank Vlad, Flock, for helping me spine this game. I found this on SRC, and, um, I, well, no, I found it online, and I researched the speedrun, and I really like the speedrun, and then I went through walls, and then, oh, dear God, I cut the run in half. Vlad's been pushing this game down faster and faster, and we are just really excited to be able to show off this game whenever we can. And I'm going to jump by saying time. My estimate for this game is going to be about 51 minutes. 50 minute would be a good estimate as well. But just in case something goes horribly wrong, like you like you saw, I messed up a few times. I probably lost about a like not a minute. I probably lost a lot of time just to being dumb and dying constantly. Um this game is very consistent. Um the last several ones I've done, I've never gone over 50 minutes. So, thank you guys for watching. This game is a lot of fun. It's very easy to pick up. It's very easy to um, to find, very easy to purchase, sell. It's a really good fun game, casually and speedrun wise. If you ever look for a nice little break that doesn't have too many very difficult platforming sections, I very much recommend this game. It is a very beautiful game, and we skip half of it too, so. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and um, I hope to get to see you guys again soon.